Shane Kelly, driver for the University of Wolverhampton Racing. How are we? Good, thank you. Yeah, it's good qualifying yesterday. Uh, P4 made lots of changes on Friday, so we didn't know where we we're going to be really. Quite happy with the car and going into going into the race today, but yeah. it just didn't seem under us a little bit. We struggled a little bit with grip. the first start because it seemed a bit of a non-race really after yeah. the, after the safety car. Yeah. Um, so once we got um, once we got going again, it just it didn't seem as, as the same as it did on the first start. Um, obviously we probably dropped temperatures and things when we got through there so um, we need to make a few changes I think um, small issue with the power steering as well which wasn't working for me <laughs> yes. uh, intermittent so a, a bit of a nightmare but the way that it runs here is we sort of qualify in this race and we've got a 30 minute race yeah. in a few hours so we got around you know the last that's, that's the, last, the yeah. last four laps were survival for us and yeah. um, for everyone probably out there because it was just so bad same sort of condition we had at Silverstone last time out but again a familiar a familiar condition <laughs> for us which is nice I always like the wet didn't seem happy with me in that one so and that's the key though isn't it it's getting around in weather like that especially on the first race because a couple haven't they'll have a lot more repairs to do you're going from a good position of being third you're not going from the back of the grid with repairs to the vehicle itself yeah. yeah if we look at it like that we gained one position in qualifying so yeah, um, yeah. so p3 on the grid team have been grid again you know um, yeah long weekend here when we do a, a quality on one day and, and two races on the ne next day so but yeah really happy and obviously you're unique team you're a university team we've got a sort of 11 year legacy now and um, we're, we're still you know getting students straight into jobs with there's a couple of guys and girls who've walked straight into jobs from even graduation and not, they, they, will, they will traditionally finish the team with us on the weekends until the end of the year and so it's just seeing that whole journey from when they started in foundation and all the way through into into that job and and it just works for everyone yeah it's it's uh, I think it's still slightly under recognized really and what yeah. we do and so it's just I think it's, it's, it's come into fruition now when we see our students in the paddocks you know we watched the F4 race after the F1 qualifying yesterday and the F4, F4 race the 4 race at Silverstone and then you know there's four or five guys on the cars on the grid who are our guys you know yeah. in their three yeah. days so it's, it's, it's you can see them around the paddock now and, and it's, it, it does really work and, and that's what we're here to do because you can never lose sight of that either there's, no. there's, a, there's a balance between what we do uh, to go race winning and, and actually and, and actually just go and, and getting these guys into jobs and and what that and, and obviously but be rounded human beings at the end of it as well and, and yeah. be very employable. Um, but having like factory relationships with Revolution and then Morgan as well, that's 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 just boosts everything we do. You know, as a driver, I raced for 28 years. You know, and your ego can take over um, sometimes, and that's that's the balance. You got to say right, okay, what is good for us? You know, yes, we can take the win, but we can smash the car up and we can end the course. You know, and it's 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 fine. It's fine and cutthroat as that you know you can see behind how many sponsors we have it's, it's self-funded we fund it yeah, you yeah. Know, with our sponsors and and it, it, there's a fine line between survival and, yeah. and actually just going for a, a do or die manoeuvre race win yeah. but at the yeah. end of the day we, we, we're putting on a experience and a, a professional practice for what they want to do when they, they, they leave us Fantastic to see a female mechanic. Tell us your journey. So I've been going to race tracks since I was about three years old. But dad and my granddad raced in a classic series. They had a Lotus Alain Mark 1 and then a Mark 2 from the age of about 9 to 15. I just really enjoyed being here. Looked at what I could do to get into racing, where, how I can get into spending as much time at a paddock as I physically can. And ended up here, doing motorsport engineering at University of Wolverhampton. And there should be more female mechanics, shouldn't there, in this sport? In the, in the aftermarket in general? Yeah, it would be amazing. I'd love to see more women in the paddock, because at the minute I'm the only female on this team. On our Morgan team, we have there's two female mechanics, which is really good to see. But I just feel a bit lonely. I want some female company. <laughs> there's a lot of men. There's a lot of testosterone. Uh, and this is what we need to change in the whole aftermarket, in the whole automotive industry, yeah. really, is get more females involved. Because at the end of the day, it's not who you are, what you are. It's can you fix the car? Yeah, that's all it comes down to is what you can do and what, yeah, what you can do on the car. And it's fairly simple to learn. It's fairly straightforward. The more you do, the more you learn. There has been more females in the recent years of doing engineering, doing mechanics, which is great to see. And hopefully it continues that way. Tell us about your role. You just said you're a rear end mechanic. Yeah. Tell us what that involves. So I 
before it goes out, check that everything's in the right place, everything's where it should be, everything's paint marked, nothing's moved out of place, all the wheels are on, wheel pins are in, send it out, it goes around, if the car comes in, check that nothing's on towards, nothing we need to worry about, the car goes back out. When it comes in, in between, say like quality and race, or race one and race two, we will just want to check everything. If the driver's come in and said, we want there's some data set up we need to do to change, we'll change that according to what we've been told by the data guys. And it's just make sure everything's in the right place so that our end of the car runs perfectly. And on a day like today, when it's not the best of weather. It's beautiful weather. <laughs> what difference does that make to you compared to um, a normal dry day? So, besides getting it absolutely soaked, we will change the roll bar settings and we'll put wets on other than the slicks and it will just be make sure everything stays dry that should stay dry everything electrical needs to stay dry really yeah um, and just hope that there's no, the, the dry line on the track is dry enough so we don't spill off and what about the decision on tyres obviously it's a major key on the day like today what's the what's the point between slicks intermediates and wets how close is that that is a decision for the data guys but I think we woke up this morning looked over there saw a lovely ominous black cloud heading towards us and went we're going to be on wets we did have a look at the weather maps as well just check see where that's going but we do we only have run slicks or wets you're home for six for race two hopefully I really hope so I really hope it's dry and when Shane finishes in the top three what what does that bring pride to you you know that you've done that job yeah. and got him in the top three it's great to be top three it's great to be on the podium and we're second in class as well which is lovely race one sets the position for race two so we'll be starting p3 hopefully we move up the grid but just going back to your good self um mm -hmm. how does being a female how, how do the lads treat you in the in the the same as everyone else, which is how it should be. That's brilliant to see, you know, everybody treating you as a, yeah. as a mechanic. What's putting women off joining this sport? I don't think there's a lot of knowledge or advertisement around it that's specifically aimed at females. I know there's a lot of, like, there's women in engineering, there's um, girls on track as well now. So it is slowly coming and it's great to see. It's just, it's just aware. It's people aren't fully aware, I think. So what's the dream? I... I'm not overly fast as to where I end up as long as I'm at a track as much as possible. I'm very happy. I'm hoping I'm looking at going over to America next year. Wow. And seeing see what opportunities are over there. I've been talking to a couple of teams, so hopefully Hopefully I'll go across the pond, maybe. And then F1 in a few years? Maybe. But a lot of people get into F1. It's a bit competitive. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm more interested in endurance racing. I know it's like a 48 hour long work day, but it looks so much fun. Head of data at University of Warhampton Racing team today at Donington Park. How key is your role today? Yeah, so obviously when Shane's out on track, he's giving us feedback uh, so we can make set up changes to the car, make sure he's uh, going as fast as he possibly can. Obviously, it's also critical in a prototype car because there's so many sensors, so many things that go wrong on the car. So in the morning, we will uh, do a fire up, I'll check over all the sensors, make sure they're all doing what we want it to do. So when Shane goes out on track, cars performing well and what's the difference between this morning's sprint race and this afternoon's race how key is that data in between where Shane can perhaps pick up a, a, a half a second say so obviously the more running that we get on track is the more time running that we get to dial in the car so we'll take the data points from this morning from the race and then improve it for the next one and of course on in F1, we see the big screens of the people on the pit lanes. Yeah. Not quite as glamorous as that, is it, no. for your good self? It's on a laptop and... Yeah, so we can only get uh, data after the session, so we can't check uh, in real time while it's on the track, unfortunately. And how key is the eye come to that, that you can see what's happening? Uh, obviously, yeah, it's really important. So, obviously, Shane's had a little e-pass issue, which is uh, power steering. So, obviously, we've come back in now and we've checked over the data and we're trying to figure out how to fix it for the next one. Because it's a busy pit at the moment, isn't it? It's a busy area. Yes, we've got loads of things that we want to make sure are right for the next race so we can go, go out there and win it. But you're looking to improve from third, not looking to improve from last or down the grid, no, you're looking no. to improve from third, so it's not a bad show. Yeah, it's good. We're, we're up the sharp end of the grid. Jake, Hello. head of the rear of the car. Yes. Tell us about your role. So my role consists of uh, 
leading the team through the spanner checks on the rear and maintaining the car and undergoing any checks or maintenance or if anything's wrong with the car we inspect it and then carry out any necessary uh, procedures that need doing to get it ready to the race again. And also when it's back here I've noticed that a lot of you, you you're actually lifting the car and dropping the car as well. Yeah. Quite a big role really. Yeah. <laughs> nerve wracking the first time doing it. Never used the air system before. It's just getting enough pressure. Once it, it takes 40 bar pressure that we use to wow. lift it. So yeah, it's quite scary. Having that high, never used it before, but we're all right now. Which is quite a health and safety role as well, isn't it? Because you, yeah. are, you are lifting mm -hmm. quite a hefty car and yeah. dropping it down again. <laughs> yeah. So it's just making sure that we're all safe when doing it and no one's uh, in a dangerous position before I start. And we've just watched a race in the wet at yeah. Donington Park. The sun's come out now, yeah. hopefully, so we get a dry race. Yeah. How nervous are you during that race when it's wet? I know you're nervous uh, anyway, but that, especially when it's wet. Yeah, hey? in the wet, you get a longer lap, so you're waiting tentatively a bit longer. And then especially once a safety car comes out or you get any type of flag, you're obviously nervous until you see your car come past. But yeah, it, is, it does get worse in the rain. But Shane is quite a good wet weather driver, so it does allow the fears a little bit. A couple of cars did go off track. Yeah. Um, so you're quite, quite lucky today with the role you've got now in between races of re repairing the car how much work have you got to do now and how much work would you have to do if, if anything uh, so for now it's just visual checks and spanner checks um, there's a few issues with the car we're just sorting through now but nothing on if we had any incidents so I think we did have one run through the gravel so it's bodywork off clean all the gravel out before we can go again check there's none in the brakes or anything serious like that but yeah it's a lot less work than if we had an incident like last round shall we say and well, what happened last round? Uh, so last round we had uh, contact with the car during practice on the uh, Friday and it ripped the whole rear left corner off so it was getting new parts from the factory and a light one fitting them on the Friday night but we got it all done and then we were there again Saturday morning because you do here and obviously my people that go off F1 to be fair yeah. we do here the crews have been working all night I don't think people understand the crew's job do they and let them oh, have yeah, to get the car back on track late nights and early mornings mostly it's that's motorsport though and it wouldn't have it any other way would it? so the bacon and sausage sandwich I've just seen you having they're quite key in this <laughs> yeah, situation yeah. Oh, they go down quite well once brilliant working late and, yeah. uh, and what's, what's the future for you in, in motorsport uh, hopefully work my way up the formula um, and bring Formula 1 running a car to be a lead mechanic in a Formula 1 team hopefully any but preference for a team are you going to talk to any any uh, team principal? Well, McLaren is a favourite, but I'll be happy with any really. So Zach Brown? Yeah, I'll get on to Zach Brown. <laughs> How's it been? Yeah, absolutely brilliant, learning a lot. Um, yeah, it's a good experience out here. You're 15. When I did my work experience, it was a bank. Yeah. Tell me why motorsport? Um, well, it's not a boring job, obviously. There's uh, lots of activities, lots to do. You're getting your hands dirty. It's a good job all around, really. They've spoken highly of you this weekend and said you've really got stuck in. Yeah. Tell us tell us more what you're doing um, so it's tyre engineer so basically working on tyre pressures to track temperature just getting little bits of information to uh, help performance or workout performance to make the car run better really and in the garage it's okay you're obviously working you're being yeah, yeah. looked after of course what's it like when the car's on track for you um, it's not not too bad for me really it's, uh, it's quite an easy job for me obviously but um, it's, it's good it's good I'm really enjoying that nervous when the race is on not too nervous. I thought I'd be more nervous, honestly, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So tell us about you. Tell us about what you want to do. Tell us why motorsport. Um, well, it's really just a, a fun job. Like it's what I enjoy. I like cars. I like working. I like being active, and I don't want a boring job. I want to be, you know, getting my hands dirty and that stuff. And of course, we've got. A, a, a bit of a bigger race a few miles yeah, up the road today at Silverstone is that the dream is that the aim of course man yeah of course you know uh, tell us what you want to do in F1 um, so the mechanic side really like working on the engines uh, just helping performance base on the car do you have a team preference? Uh, Mercedes. I actually got into F1 from my cousin. He's a big F1 fan, and then you know he he I followed his footsteps really and got into it. 